Oh, just realized I've got no idea what resolution this is in. Oh well. Hopefully it's not 144. Crikey, Tony, you're fast as anything on that one. I just realised my workshop light isn't on. There we go. Bit more brightness. Uh, Bullion, Annex, Delire. Yeah, it's late night. Um, what are we at? No, it's only 10.30. It's all right. Let's see. Gotta get the TriStar changed on this. iPhone 6. Also gotta do the dock on it. Basically, it's a complete overhaul. Uh, not really wanting to take any chances with replacing one only to have another go pop on it ten minutes later. Wrong tweezers. Hey, Pernov. Uh, I thought I was going to have a laptop to do tonight, Pernov, but it ended up it's just a bad battery. It was a Lenovo 110. It turns out just has a bad battery in it. And hilariously, I cannot find any, at least none domestically. They seem to be as rare as hen's teeth. I think it's a uh, 15 AS302 or something like that. Yeah, 15 AS302. Needs to say, they're about $60. And then about another sixty dollars to ship them. So I said to the client, I said, "You may as well just go without the battery. You'll be fine. Keep it connected to the power, and you'll be okay." So it's been quite a while since I've done a. Six TriStar. I don't really get much in the way of TriStar jobs anymore. I think everybody's sort of used them up. Have you got your quick hot air station? Yes, I do. There you go. I've had it for a while now. <sighs> It's been a bit of back and forth with the abuse. Sometimes it abuses me, sometimes I abuse it. So, yeah. It looks like my screwdriver has decided that it doesn't want to be magnetic today. I've noticed sometimes I can magnetize them and then something happens, I touch something and it instantly becomes demagnetized, or pretty close to being fully demagnetized. A bit frustrating when that happens. Mm -hmm. Go. Hey Nathan, N for N, haven't seen you before, or maybe I have and I just don't recognise your name. Yeah, I thought I'd keep missing everybody, oh man, this thing's had liquid damage on it, fantastic, I guess we'll have to have a look at that too. Okay, let's see if the Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's worse than I thought. That could actually be why it's running into some fun. The 861D, oh, the 200. Uh, you gotta appreciate off come from the uh, Tenma system, which is basically the same as what Chris Long and... Good God, I'm just ripping this up. Uh, Chris Long and Jason SDS use. 
and that's got a maximum of around about 25 liters per minute and then you get this quick and it's uh, 120 it kind of leaves you a little bit unsure of what settings to use sometimes uh, I'm just gonna have to redo this entire one something doesn't look like anything's really gotten in there but it is a mess yeah well the Tenma, the one that I had before it's and I've commented to this effect in the past is that it's good for iPhones or well enough for iPhones but I definitely noticed when it came to doing the MacBooks it was uh, not good enough and when I say not good enough, it just didn't have the power to push through some of the more difficult situations. I remember, I think where I completely had my mind changed was uh, I was trying to get a 01005 resistor off the board. And it just took way too long to get that off. And it was at that point I decided, no, nah, time to spend the money. Oh, this thing's really... I don't know what it's seen. It's not really... I don't know what that is. I wonder if this is a refurb. Because I certainly get a... L I mean, look at all this. I get a lot of refurb phones coming in here. Not for repairs or anything. Uh, just screen jobs. Or battery jobs. Oh, well. We'll get this off. Will the phone work with that? Yes, it will. Uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's like a mix between flux and soot. I'm not sure. Uh, I will make my usual complaint about this quick though is that those nozzles are a major pain in the posterior to get off. Wish they had come up with a better release system. It just feels like I'm going to eventually break the uh, element in it just simply from yanking too hard and knocking it on the edge of the table or something. It's just a shame considering they did everything else so nicely. Switch you out of the way. Switch back. Here comes the flickering. Get out of here. You too. Yeah, I haven't had much chance to do many streams lately, let alone even videos between just trying to trying to find a, my preferred pick spot here. Uh, between all the kittens and the cats and all that sort of stuff. And then just trying to do daily work. Really isn't much time. You sort of get to this time of the night and you pretty much feel like crashing. Watch a bit of Netflix and crash and burn. Don't suffer light flicker as bad as Lewis. Yeah, I was going to say, it's probably the 220 volt versus 110. It's mostly the LED lamps that are bad for it, and I find a lot of them don't have any sort of reserve in them. Like, 
Yeah, they're just directly hooked up to the line, and of course they react a lot faster than incandescent. So they'll certainly let you know. <sighs> what have you been watching on Netflix? I keep getting trashy shows, to be honest. Um, shows that I get to the end of, and I think, you know, I would have been better off just going to sleep or something. Uh, I finished watching the 100 series up to whatever it is. I don't know why I keep watching that. It's just, I don't know, running out of other series I would like to watch. <laughs> okay, we're going to get the overfill knocked off this. I know some people dive right in on this and just uh, heat it up and twist it off. I gotta say, you know, that's pretty ballsy of them. They obviously can do it, but I'm not game to do that. It's not really my inclination to be that sort of risk taker. I mostly just don't want to mess up the caps. I mean, I can put them back on, but I'd rather not. Hey Adrian, I'm trying to think of what, oh that's right, I watched Geostorm the other night, oh my goodness, it was like Sharknado with Gerard Butler, the only thing that I didn't mind about Geostorm was Abby Cornish was in it, so that made it tolerable, and then before that I think I watched The Fifth Wave, and that was another piece of trash, that was like the day after the war starts or something tomorrow, I knew from the start it was going to be dodgy, and I just kept at it. I guess I sort of suffered my own punishment there. Banshee. Alright, I'll have a look at that one. Uh, let's see. Santa Clarita Data, pretty much. We watched that for dinner time TV. That's pretty amusing. It was one of those shows I didn't think I was going to like at all. But then I did. <laughs> tomorrow when the war begins, yeah, so the fifth wave is kind of like tomorrow when the war begins, but yeah, slightly more Disney-like maybe. Needless to say, oh man, I don't have my... You can get another trash. Yeah, Polly, it was, um, like I said, it was definitely a surprise for me as well. So when I saw the preliminary adverts for it, I thought, oh, this is going to be so crass and, you know, I'm just not going to be able to sit down and enjoy this. But uh, once you got over the whole notion of it was very sort of chuck off tongue in cheek and um, uh, the dialogue is what I like in it. So, it'll be good to see season 3 come out.
it was good to see Nathan Fillion in there, and the, even more interesting to see that he came back for season two. Oh no, was I supposed to tell everyone that was a spoiler alert? Alright, uh, since my tri star for this is going to be a lead free ball tri star, because it's supposedly fresh and new from the shop, I will be putting down some leaded solder here so as to appropriately salt the lead free ball alloys into flowing. Otherwise, what happens, it just takes too long for the uh, the BGA to suitably reflow and when it does start flowing it just feels all yuck. Except I'm doing a dreadful job here. Oh well, I might have to hot wick this. And of course I'm doing all my programming on the side. I'm still working on the new features for uh, the flex board view. It seems I have to, it's a perpetual process. <clears throat> you get about a week of relaxation and then it's like, oh gosh, better code something new. Yeah, those pads are a little bit shonky, but they're okay. Yeah, ZX, that's actually a really good question. Does the TriStar do three things? Yeah, I never thought about that. Maybe someone can tell us. I don't know. Funny how you can miss the ob... Whoops. There goes that. You can miss the obvious things sometimes. Where did that tri-star go? Oh, there it is. Oh, uh, hello Wayne Taylor, and you turn up and naturally you're on to your usual behaviour. <laughs> uh, Mr. Robo was another... Uh, i got to work out which way this iPhone 6 goes. What is my cat doing outside? Stalking something. Alright, pin one is inwards and away from the NAND. Now, uh, Tony with those iPhone boards, uh, let's see, the 6S, uh, most of them are okay, but the iPhone 6 and I think the 6 Plus are a complete and utter disaster. They're of some profoundly early revision and there is simply not enough that lines up with them. That I'm not really willing to... I mean, I'll put them out, but I wouldn't trust them. I think, ultimately, I am going to have to produce the community version of the boards. So I'm going to have to write software so that we can all contribute bits at a time to creating our own board views. Because relying on those pads ones, it's just not on. They are really, the quality of the data is really bad. Almost as bad as my alignments here. How long have you spent on the mapping so far? Oh, g'day, Sonia. Uh, 
I spent about a week collectively, I'd say, on it. And so I do have some good data there. Fume hood. But it's not good enough. So yeah, I think I'm going to have to go write some more software and get the community to build a better one. There she goes. Yeah, I think the community thing is the way to go. And if I can do the software well enough, it'll be something we can use for basically any boards we want. And I think that will untether us from the rather odd curse of depending on some foreign sources to be able to work on our own creations, so to speak. I can't really say that properly because of the fact that, well, I'm Australian and, you know, Australians did not, at least Australian company, did not design the iPhones or the Mac boards or anything like that. But you know what I'm saying. I should say English sources. Okay, maybe I should do a tri-star ball in here, just for the hell of it. Oh, not tri-star. SMC. Hey, Mark? Yeah, it's been a while, I know. It's, uh, it's uh, just... Even though I don't have children, I've got 15 cats that I'm managing. Well, not even me directly, it's my wife, but... Yeah... I think those balls are in pretty good condition. That one, that one on the uh, the right hand corner, it always seems to have a bad habit of pancaking for some reason. I think what might be happening is when the uh, uh, when I try to clear the pads, a little more solder gets on there. And so it creates a bigger ball, but because it's got to go level with everyone else, it gets squashed out a bit more. That's my theory. Feel free to come up with a better one. Hey, from the ashes. Yeah, we're we're lucky. We've got the room here to be able to do it, and I've got the funds to be able to you know, pay for all their food, their medicals, and things like that. Like, the the broken pelvis cat, she was um, about $350 just for the um, vet assessment and whatnot. So, yeah, it gets a little expensive, but, you know, once we decide to take them into our care, then we do the very best we can for them. It's just amazing how much food they go through. You know, 15 cats. And I am looking to move to a uh, property in the near future, about one and a half acres. And I'm hoping that then I can create a much better shelter for them. Something a little more, um, something a little more formal. Like if I set up, say, half an acre for them, or even quarter of an acre, you, know, you could easily have 10 cats on there in a free roam situation until they're able to be rehomed. So uh, we're going to try to go for that. And anyway, I'm diddle-daddling there. I need to now change the dock. Oops. Wrong window. Hopefully this won't be a dud dock. Last week for me, six puppies, eight weeks of pee and poo cleaning and heel biting. Uh, what sort of dogs were they? 
Man, looking at this poon, there's uh Man, I really don't have enough light in here. Oh, let's get this. Oh, if, and if anyone um, was on Discord or who wasn't on Discord, yeah, we use magnetic pads for putting the parts on. Well, I ended up buying 10 A4 sheets of magnetic pad. So now I've got more than enough. I should be able to cut these up into quarters. And I don't think I'll run out anytime soon. It's pretty cheap too. It was about $29 Australian. Uh, heavy stuff. I suppose it's got some degree of metal in it. Hey Edge. Good thanks. Mark, I'm glad Flex Board Viewers made your life easier. And in the end, I've sort of I'm trying to make my own life easier too with Flex Board View, which is why I wrote it a little bit. Okay, there was also the commercial interest as well. I mean, I sort of took Open Board View to where I wanted, and I was happy with it from a community project perspective. I thought, you know, I've contributed what I think is a pretty good amount, and there's been, you know, fortunately, other contributors as well, like Pionov, uh, who took my nasty code and merged it in with the open board view. So, uh, yeah, very thankfully did that. Because when it comes to Git, I am a Git. I really don't know my way around it. I mean, I'll code all day, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll make a mess of the Git in a matter of seconds. An open board view is actually really my first real C++ project. I mean, I tried hard to turn it into a C project, but certain people kept yelling at me. Probably a good reason. And on the upside, I've come to quite like some of the C++ things, like standard templates, like vectors. Certainly vectors are a big thing. And I'm sort of getting lazy now with the string type instead of the char star type pointer char char array take your pick have your argument about it so yeah once i sort of got it to the point where i thought yeah i think i've put enough into this now yeah and i mean on its own open board view does is a perfectly good product if you don't want to spend the money, then there's no problem with it. And you can always contribute to it. But yeah, I thought, well, I've got to get this property and house soon, so I need to start trying to push up my income a little bit. So I thought, right, I'll give this a shot. How can you call that a phone now? It's basically free. <laughs> yeah, there's not much to it. I don't know if anyone ever gets pedantic like this and takes that little seal off to put it onto the new one. I mean, really, what's the point? But, I do it. Mind you, I don't do the one that's actually around the charge dock. Usually because it's just not... It's in such poor condition in most cases. The other thing I learned and came to enjoy by doing Open Board View, the big project, was um, a thing called Travis CI, which is continuous integration. And, uh, you know, when I first heard about it, I thought, this is a bit daft. Why would you, why would you care about that when you, know, you can just recompile on, on your own machine? But it has the really nice capability of you can set what type of machine it's building on and then different platforms like Mac OS, Win, well actually no, I don't know about Win. Um, anyway, it turned out to be one of those more useful than I realized type things. And now I use it quite a lot. So what you do is you you do your code changes, you sort of, you push them up to the server, the GitHub, 
and then the Travis system goes along and builds your packages for you, ready to go. Oh, you little rat bag, I hate it when it does this. It's like that smidgen. T or is that where the little. I don't know why they call these things new, because they're not. <laughs> There's a piece of plastic garbage there. That's probably the. It's probably part of the speaker. Pomeranian puppies. Oh my goodness. Those things are going to be like yappy as hell, aren't they? Sounds like odd, odd magnets on the fridge. Uh, ZX, yeah, they're, they're fridge magnet sheets. I used to get them down at the local uh, dollar store. And I think they're about, funnily enough, about two or three dollars. For a... Something smaller than A5. And yeah, that was fine, but I just kept going through them too much because what will happen is I, I don't know if I've got them around here nah. like I have all these containers I'll buy these like 10 or 20 at a time when they're on special for about two bucks and so each one of these when a phone comes in I put one of the magnetic sheets in there to hold all the bits and pieces together so that it, if I'm waiting on the customer to get back to me about whether they, they're going to give me a thumbs up or thumbs down for keeping the machine alive, the phone alive, I don't risk uh, losing all my bits and pieces in the meantime. I did have a nice bright light just above me, but then in the middle of the night it fell down. And I thought, oh, I'm not going to put that back up again in a hurry. There's a lot of things I'm not wanting to do in this place now because if I'm moving to a new place I really don't want to invest too much money into this workshop anymore. The new place is just a shed but it's about a 12 by 12 meter shed and it's one of those double height ones. So I'm planning on going in and creating a house inside of it with a loft and hopefully I don't make a complete mess of it. Hey Mike, yeah, it's been a while. I use the same stuff that do you have recycled plastic takeaway boxes. Oh, okay. I haven't tried the recycle. The only trouble I had with them was I always felt they're a little bit, um, uh, a little bit brittle with a tendency. If you push them too hard, they bite you by splitting and then slashing you with their freshly exposed plastic sharp edges. That's just my paranoia playing up there, perhaps. Sometimes I can be a little bit like. Meryl Streep in Lemony Snicket's series of unfortunate events. She's hyper paranoid about everything and then sure enough everything goes wrong. Uh, like right now I've partially forgotten where my screws go. So what's the... Is there any... Yeah, liquid damage. I'm just finding another speaker. Liquid damage. Yep, they're all liquid damage. Yeah. 
looks like they just have to live with the speaker that's less than 100% perfect. Probably UV exposure and age. No. Probably, yes. Particularly around this area. Be curious to see how much longer uh, petrochemical plastic. Why doesn't that look right? Um. Yeah, it'd be interesting how long petrochemical plastic containers remain for foodstuffs and all that before they completely shift over to tapioca starch and things like that. Why do I get the feeling that's supposed to go above? No, it is going under. When you don't do it every day, you start to doubt yourself. Still feels a bit wrong. That's better. Morning, Greg. And I'm sorry, but there's no intern entertainment here. I do have a couple of people I wouldn't mind having as interns. I'm just not set up for it. Okay. I suppose I should see if this even works. That would be an ideal outcome at this point. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure that this was even TriStar to start with, but I couldn't get a definitive diagnosis no matter what I tried, but this thing kept chewing through batteries. And I mean, chewing through batteries is difficult because of the fact that, well, as you know, a lot of the batteries, the quality out there is just atrocious. It seems like my supplier has finally got their act together and start to pick up a decent one and I tried it with dead battery, I tried it with no battery, I tried measuring the draw it was neither here nor there so I figured well it's a low risk operation we'll give it a whirl the data's back up. That's the other thing, yeah. I could back up their data, so often when the TriStar blows, in a lot of cases, you can't even get the data through the um, through the dock. But that was still functioning. So I was like, what are you? What's actually wrong with you? <laughs> it could be something like, what do you call it? Um, I, don't I can't remember the name of the charge actual charge controller. I want to say Travis and that's not it. <laughs> Tri uh, not Trident. Uh, yeah, Trident. No? Someone hold me out here before I look like a complete fool. Oh, we've got proper charge right there. It's uh, 920. That's pretty much how it should be. So take this off screen. Where did you get those boards from? Uh, which boards are you talking about, Cammy? So 
Some places have banned straws already. Yeah, it's good to see that happen. We've banned plastic bags here as well now. Did you see the internal training videos? I heard about them, Greg, but in all honesty, I haven't bothered to spend 10 minutes watching them yet. I just sort of, yeah. All right, so we're at 8% now. Display and brightness. Mm -hmm. Looks like they've got some hot spots on this display. Which means some grit got in there at some point, probably. I don't know if that shows. No, it doesn't show up. No. All right, let's see if this goes beyond 8%. Okay, so the charge rate's what I expect from this. So let's see, here we go. Oh, the magnetic ones. Ah, uh, Cammy, I got them from eBay. Uh, there was someone selling the A4 1.5mm thick uh, magnetic sheets. It was about 29 Australian dollars. <clears throat> Pardon me. Hey, Zero Cool 278. I'll just call you Zero Cool for now. Good to see you've caught a live stream for the first time. Not quite as entertaining as um, some other people's, but passes the time I go. We're up to 9%, so I think we're doing all right. Amazon looks to be selling a lot of stainless steel straws. Sonia, those stainless, stainless steel straws freak me out, to be honest. I keep getting images of, like, you know, people be stupid with kids and stuff, or kids are stupid, and they're like, someone's got a straw in their mouth, and they come along, and they're like, Tow. wonder how many unintentional lobotomies we're going to end up with in a few years. The procedure they have to follow to open the iPhone, is it uh, rather protracted, is it, I guess? Hey, VV and AH, another person I haven't seen before. Oh, thank you very much. So, those of you who are using Flexboard View, are you thinking you'll have any use for the new jobs feature that's coming out? Um, I'm only putting it out because I myself many a time will... I just forget too much when I'm in the rush of the day because it's only me working here, so I've got to manage the customers and everything like that. Uh, so it's very easy for me to walk away from a job, come back 10 minutes later, and I've got to go back over things to remind myself of what's happening. So I figured with the jobs overlay, I can just mark down the things I'm doing. Um, hopefully it'll be useful, or it could end up being like the annotations feature that I put in there, and it was there... I had high hopes for it, and nothing really came of it. Staying for the shorts. Oh, yeah. It's supposedly winter here, and we're going to get down to maybe 13, 10 perhaps tonight. But this winter, I really haven't been compelled to wear a lot of uh, cold weather gear. Okay, I've got my flannelette shirt on, but it's already feeling pretty hot. Get back to redecorating. Okay, Tony. Enjoy that. I hope you're not doing tiling. Tiling sucks. Alvis Tomi. Hello from Indonesia. They use a jig with four suction cups and they always throw away the screws. Wow. Okay, that's a little excessive. All right, this is up to 10% now. I guess we'll pull it out and see if it drops off. That's the real test. Uh, when it charges up, Take it out, see how quickly that percentage drops. When it's fully charged, it should sit at about... You shouldn't lose a percentage point more than maybe every two hours or so initially. Plastering and painting, yuck. Yeah, it's all yours. I, I love doing framing. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I like doing, framing. But plastering, painting, tiling, all those things that require... Dealing with the uh, yeah the wet mixes and all that, so uh, I can't handle. It. I'll pay someone to do that stuff. Hey Peter, is that Johansson or Johansson? Ten to thirteen isn't cold. I agree, it's not. I mean, at ten, I'm usually wanting to put on you know the flannelette when I go walking outside, particularly if there's a bit of a breeze out there. But other than that, no. I'll probably sleep with the covers off. 
which is actually bad because when it comes to summer and it's high 30s or mid 30s during the night it's just brutal I'm hoping with the new location that I will be able to put I'm hoping about 10 kilowatt of panels on the roof and then they should fuel the air conditioners with enough power to at least keep it cool minus 30 whoa yeah I don't think I could handle minus 30 I would probably just be a num a literal numbskull at minus 30 Zero is pretty much where my limit is. I suspect a fair bit of it's probably a customization too. Now the reason why the board's coming out again is because I've got to put the shield back on. No way to remove data off the new 2980 Mac. Oh yeah, I saw that they didn't have the LiPo connector. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing. Really, I don't know what's going on with Apple. I feel like they had a good thing, like at the tail end of Jobs and sort of like for the first year or two after that. And something's gone horribly wrong. They're sort of reinforcing all the bad behaviours. Kind of like how when you hear Lewis go off about Apple competitors copying the bad features of Apple and it's almost like Apple is now copying, copying its own bad features and just enhancing them and making everything so much worse I mean I didn't mind the walled guard I use a I use a MacBook Pro myself for a lot of stuff I find it a very nice machine it's a uh, 1502 unit it's an i5 5200 in it 256 gig solid state retina screen it's a great machine. It holds its charge. It um, turns on straight away. It, it's, everything's predictable with it. I can use it all day, no troubles. And it even helps me get cat hair off my. God damn it! That's Mia's cat hair. Mia is my little blonde ginger, and she just she doesn't get into this room, but because her hair floats so much. It still gets out of here. I could put this in the ultrasonic, but I'm really not in the mood for that. It takes too long for that 10 litre ultrasonic to heat up. So this should be good enough. Thirty-three in UK is a heat wave. Yeah, I saw the news about that. People like thinking they're on the verge of death or something. Again, it all comes down to what you're used to. Okay. Now where the hell did that shield go? Right, you need to get in the rubbish bin. Scores. The VRM is overheating, troubling as a worry. Yes, I saw that um, earlier. Yeah, that's a real... Again, that's a real, what the heck are they doing? I mean, the spec would have been really clear about the requirements for that module, or those modules, or rather the current demands. So for them to go and... Uh, produce something that's not going to cope with that, and they would have picked that up into testing easily. Maybe someone in purchasing got their hands on uh, some idea that they could save five cents per MOSFET and went for a MOSFET that had either poorer switching characteristics or something. I don't know. Either way, it's uh, yeah, that's not a good thing. I'm hoping it'll get to the point where Apple sort of goes, oh, okay, look, we've really botched up too much. Someone gets their head rolled. And they get back to making machines that were at least, you know, worth the money. Uh, 
I'll switch over to my... Oh. I do want to make a project where there's a switch or a sensor or something that will know when I've got the microscope directly over like this and automatically make OBS switch over. It's entirely doable. It's just i got to do it. It's like so many things in life. Yeah, I can do that. I've just got to do it. Come on, I can see you're about to go, there you go. And you are down. So yeah, I'm hoping Apple will go through the phase of like, we were complete idiots, which is this current phase. And they'll come back with something sensible because the way they're locking everyone out even their own dedicated customers is just yeah I don't get it I know that I know they've got money to burn they could burn millions a day and still be making a profit at the end of the year it's just incredible uh, switch back Repeating myself, but the Intel specs aren't clear at all. It's about, it should be okay, and there not enough testing on engineering samples, or they didn't care about it. Well, what do you reckon, Pernov? Do you reckon it's more a case of they didn't care about it, or not enough testing, or they got pushed for time? Because I know a year or two ago, was it? Apple was talking about slowing... Oh, no, wait, that was with the iPhones. They are talking about slowing down their development rate because it's just getting a little bit crazy and I wish they would do that with the iPhones. i9 on the laptop makes no sense. Yeah. No, I mean, I completely agree. Even... I do wonder if... What? Everything is broken in this. Let's say this went... This is a Humpty Dumpty phone. It's gone for a tumble. So, Pinov, do you think they could change, fix it by just simply getting better MOSFETs? Or, I mean, I can't see. Jeez, what the hell is that? Just, But yeah, you're an i9 on a laptop like that. So. I can sort of understand an i7 on a, one of the big ones. As a bit of a desktop replacement. <coughs> Oh, great. You better not. Uh, from the ashes, well, I guess it's subjective. Um, depends on who you talk to. But it sounds like it's sort of both answers, maybe. But the MOSFETs could be better, which would reduce their demands on the cooling system. Or the need for the cooling.
additional phases might do it. Oh well. This is why I don't do this for a living, that sort of thing. So how many phases are they running at the moment? You got three or four? I do often wonder, when they go from three phase to four phase, uh, how does that complicate things in the sense of, I mean, three phase is naturally going to deliver a very nice constant uh, power because of the just the nature of three phases. But when they go to four, it's like, is there some sort of extra harmonics going to be happening there? No, Paul, no. There's not the one for there. Yeah, my hands are getting a little shaky tonight. That's why I'm having to use my finger to hold the screwdriver. Something just jumped up on the outside window, suspecting it's one of my cats. Let's put up uh, the battery time. Well, this is something I've been doing wrong for a long time. And it only occurred to me like a couple of months ago how to put these on properly. Previously, I would peel these off, stick them in the case, and then put the battery down. I didn't realize, like an idiot, that you're supposed to peel them off, stick them on the damn battery. Funny how you get these things that you do for years and you don't realize you're doing it wrong. I mean, they'd still stick down and everything, but 
It was always a little more of a drama than it should have been. Get off. Screen. <laughs> when someone tell me, really, really. God damn it. Oh, well. Guess I need the practice again. Oh, that's just suckful. Spare parts, it's your fault, ZX. That is your fault. If you hadn't said anything, Great. All right, this is turning into crap. Uh, you're not going to believe what else just happened. Actually, you probably are. This is really not going to be fun. You want to hear me cry? You want to hear me cry? Why? Why did that break off? You know what that means? I got to change the damn dock. Maybe this should be a job for tomorrow. And the reason why that broke, I think probably in the packaging it was bent back. And I straightened it out a little. I didn't expect it to now drop dead like that. That is a major pain in the butt. Seriously, what am I, an intern? Oh, good Jason. Oh, good timing, Jason. Come in here just to see me make an idiot of myself. Well done. Who reckons I can solder that a new uh, coax on? Or who thinks I just just replace the dock? Hey, Thomas Traeger. Yeah, I'm really not happy about that. And then you got to weigh out what's actually going to take you more time doing the dock or trying to put the coax on. Mr. Jason, so how is Florida this morning?
Party cloud of scattered thunderstorms. Excited to be in Florida. Uh, glad that you have moved into the more human supporting life area. I mean, assuming you ignore the alligator situation, of course. <laughs> Yeah, ZX, we, we certainly do make the mistakes, but you're right. It's like, it just happens to be when I'm on live stream. It's like the other day when I did the iPhone 4S, I think it was, and I tore the flex on that. I thought, really? After all these years, I actually tore a flex on live stream of all places. What pains me is I actually made efforts to make sure that cable was sitting in the right place too. So that's how it repays me. I've had no good luck soldering the micro coax. Oh, that's, that's comforting. Let's give it a whirl though. Why not? What have we got to lose? Other than more minutes of my life. Probably the sort of thing you might have better luck with uh, hot air soldering, funnily enough. Fume hood. Accus! Need a special iPhone jig? Yes, you do. <laughs> you definitely have to be very quick with the coax. I mean, it's bad enough with normal things like RJ58 and whatnot. If you are foolish enough to sold of that stuff rather than crimping it. This stuff... seems to be so much more brutal. Now, son, well, I'm not going to do the connector, but I will try this end. I'm trying to work out with that. The... Okay, that just looks like... I have to go get the one I threw in the bin. Ah. Damn it. Why hasn't someone cleaned my office? Ah. You're not even the right one. You're a success. Can't use a success one.
I have no idea where it went. Alright, that's okay, I've got a few other duds. Uh, the cleaner isn't off this week, more like this lifetime. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you've got. Oh no, your water damage, that's right. I got excited. I thought that I'd found a. No, you don't have a dock assembly either. You do, but you're water damaged. Yeah. Let's see how much of an idiot I can become. Actually, this speaker looks to be in much better condition than the one I thought. <sighs> so I guess the question is, do I hot air it? Or do I solder it? So the hacko says I should hot air it. I mean solder it. It's getting a little adamant about that. Hey, no money? Oh, I hope you got some money. No fun having no money. Alright, that looks... Looks like it's got a chance. It's got a chance. Uh, Son, you're just doing that so that everyone can see what sort of a cluster job I did on this. I'm not going to say the second word of cluster, but yeah, you know what I mean. there's Lewis amounts of flux there's no worries <laughs> I gotta say that did drive me quite badly up the wall watching the uh, starvation of flux happening under the under the newcomers okay I'm gonna have to get solder down onto that pad before I try and do any more onto the coax because it's just going to burn through the plastic there and I'm going to have to do it all over again. Okay. Hey Alex. Yeah, I know, I know. I've been busy. Not all the time left on the end of the day for fun and games like this. Yeah, we're good. Now the real test is, is there a short between those two? Because if there is, then it's all for naught. Oh, there's my multimeter. Sloped. Okay, please do not beep. Motherfucker. Really? Really? God damn. 
Let me just verify that that's... I'm pretty sure that it... Because if it's 50... No, it doesn't work like that, Paul. Yeah. That one's also shorter. What's going on there? Select... Check the aim value. I don't get that. That's showing point 0.9 ohms. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. You caught me out there. I was going to say 50 ohms, and then I was, wait a second. No, 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 no. That's impedance. Okay, these all have about one ohm resistance. All right, can someone explain that to me? It's just like a... They've got a high frequency choke on those. How much the microset camera cost you? It was... Uh, do you want that in US or Australian? We'll put it this way, it's around about 400 US. Um, which is about a million Australian dollars. I'm glad I tested some others rather than just sort of deciding that this was a failure. Normal to be shorted. Thank you, Jason. Now, can you tell me if you look at the schematic as to why that is? Because I'll be honest and say I was expecting a completely open circuit on that. I would have expected 50 ohms impedance at high frequency. I was not expecting a short like that. Things you learn every day. Smarter every day, yeah. I'm asking why nobody of the repair guys is using a benchtop multimeter. Your, I actually do want to get one, but the trouble is the ones that you can afford are generally, they have quirks with them, particularly because they come out of China. Um, the Uni-T ones, for example, they're somewhat affordable, but you have to do stupid things like if you're going to switch between, if you want to measure voltage, you've got to have your probes in one set of pair. And if you want to measure resistance, diode and stuff, you've got to jump to another pair. And it's a pain in the butt. Um, my old Protec 608 meter, I love that meter, but when I had to keep switching between sockets because of the separate voltage and diode and resistance stuff, I couldn't hack it. It was like, just like I can't hack what's going on here. The um, let's see, Paul S. Uh, Lewis's Paul. He has got one that I'm looking at. The only thing that's irking me about it right now is the fact that it's got a weird colour, but I can live with that. But yeah, I would sincerely much prefer a bench meter. But there's just practical considerations in that. And they're about $400, so it's a little hard to justify them sometimes. What the... I heard a noise and I didn't like the sound of it. Stay smarter, don't delay, get smarter every day, the things are fixed daily. <laughs> That's a good mashup. I yeah. <laughs> uh, hope you learned something. It's annoying when everyone's taken all the good catchphrases. 
Not that I ever, <coughs> not that I ever had a good one. It's more a case of oh, what? Why are you making that noise? There's no bad color that Sharpie won't fix. <laughs> I have admittingly had to do that in the past. Like, you know when you'd accidentally scratch the uh, backing paint on some of the screens? And you're like, oh, what am I going to do? So you get the Sharpie out and paint in that bit of black to cover up your little scratch. Not exactly my proudest moments, but at the same time, it's like... You gotta get a little bit realistic. So you're not gonna pull that complete screen off and discard it simply because you put a tiny scratch in there. And most of the time the customers would never even know unless you explicitly point out to them and say, look, this is scratched, I'm sorry. GW Instech GDM8341. I'm gonna look that up. I would love a Keithley. Um, five and a half digit would be fine. It's a massive overkill, but uh, I never get the Agilent ones new anymore. Let's see, 676 Australian. This is the Instec GDM. Timed out. Oh man. Actually, I was looking at those the other day. Yeah. Four and three quarter digit units. Hey, Marwe, it has been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, Jason, well, it definitely caught me out. That's for flipping sure. Like I said, I was about to redo everything because I thought that it was wrong. So I'm glad I had a reference point to check against. Oh man. What is the... You, you're completely ruined. I have to get another one of those. Whatever this stuff is, that um, this sort of substance that's hanging around in here, it seems to be affecting the plastic in a bad way. So I'll just get you out. And our microscope light has come crashing down. It's all happening. Not exactly tech racks or anything, but we've got stuff breaking around here. Uh, Cami, yes, the adhesive sheets do have, uh, the magnetic sheets do have adhesive on the back. I just leave the paper on there. I don't ever take the adhesive off. I really should buy one of those tools that remove these safely. They're like miniature forks, they are. Come here, don't you dare get lost in there. So yeah, get the ones that got the adhesive backing. That's the ones that we use. And you just don't bother taking the adhesive off. Uh, God damn it, the backing sheet off. You have to forgive me, it's approaching midnight. And I was supposed to go upstairs and uh, spend some time with the uh, one of the foster cats. <sighs> So he's going to be a bit Because I don't really see him all day because I'm too busy with everything. But he's like, that's cool. I can live with that. But you're going to come and see me later in the evening. 
and then we sit down and we watch usually watch a Lewis Rossman or a, interestingly enough a Jason STS stream a replay and he just sits there on the side with his head resting on my arm and we watch people curse or whatever <laughs> anyway he's a good cat just unfortunate we already have our own three we can't take on any more we will still foster them and yeah, look after them, rehabilitate them, all that sort of stuff. Give them the best chance that we can. Ah, oh, Aaron Summers. You're right. It really has been a long time since I've done a consistent stream, hasn't it? Thank goodness that's only referring to internet stuff. I am wondering how much Jason is screaming into the microphone uh, stream at the moment. He missed all the fun with the TriStar. This is another reason I do these at this time of the night. Because there's no way that I really could successfully do this during the day. Not with... Yeah, you have a stuff up and you've got to spend the next fair bunch of time sorting it out. Yeah. Hey, Cormac. Yeah. Okay, I need another one of those. You got one in here? Yes, I do. I've got plenty of iPhone 6 spares. Don't have too many iPhone 6s ones though for some reason. It's not because they're not popular or anything. I mean, there's plenty of them around. I just they don't seem to be failing quite in the same degree as what the 6 is. Believe me, I'm the same, and I'm looking under this microscope here. I want to throw this whole thing into the ultrasonic bath. <laughs> Great. Now I've misplaced another frickin' screw. Really? Really? We're going to lose half my customers by tomorrow. Not screaming at the stream, screaming at this backup process that fails three quarters of the way. Oh, you got an iPhone doing that. Yeah, not good. Are you getting you getting something horrible like forty thirteen? I still don't know if this coaxial repair has actually worked. I shouldn't really call it a repair, it was a replacement. So, and there's no SIM in this phone. Oh, that's going to be great. 
you know, define a sim to use. Thank you, Multimeter, for letting us know that you'd given up for the night. At least the phone turns on. Thank flip for that. I'm gonna go get a sim and come back. Mute. Oh, there you are. Come on. It's trying to go inside. Come on. Oh, I know, I know. Come on. Yeah. Jeez, you're getting heavy. Come on. Oh, it took a little bit longer I had to go and round up the cat, the one that was still outside. Sometimes it can be an absolute, sometimes it can be an absolute nightmare of a job. Other times you get real lucky. Uh, Joshua, right, yeah, uh, I'm changing things around slightly on that, dropping out a few fields that I don't think are really, really necessary. But I'm also I'm changing the structure slightly. I am genuinely worried that there will, if I don't, uh, sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once. My brain's not playing ball with me. I don't know what sim this is. Optus sim. Yeah, I just want to change the structure slightly so that it has at least a medium chance of surviving under a distributed environment. No, not you. I can't use your sim. Because at the moment everything is in the one database file. And while SQLite is very quick, it could still potentially choke up, particularly over a shared network. Close. No sim. Yeah, I don't like, do not like the sound of that. I'm going to get another one. Yeah, what?
a slide of 68. Now, what sim did I put in there? I have no idea whose sim I've just put in there. Whoops. This is my usual test one. Okay, that's better. Well, it's picked up the provider. Let's see if it picks up a few more. <laughs> Damn Australian jokes. Come on, search, search, search. Is there a way to see the signal strength, even if you're on SOS? Oh, really, Slider? Oh, well, that's good. Uh, is he going to be sending me like 10,000 bucks? That, that'd be awesome. Ten thousand would about do me very nicely. What you two doing? Okay. Some crappy old sims that might at least give me a chance to see if it comes up with the right provider. Picking up Wi Fi. Yep, Wi Fi is all good. I buy so many of those sim uh, ejector tools and I don't know where they go to. I think my sims are way too old. Uh, well, it's got all the providers there that are around here, so it must be doing all right. No, uh, you guys can't actually see that. But it's got all the main local providers here, so yeah, it must be doing all right. Considering I'm in a block house. <sighs> So yeah, it, what I have to do now is change the display settings, see if that comes up. Display and brightness. Yeah, a little too, a little dark there, buddy. There we go. What I have to do now is let it charge up to 100%, cut the power to it, as in, yeah, take the charger out, and then... Simply see how long it takes before it discharges. If I see anything more than 1% every hour or two, then I know it's still got problems. 
Oh, well. Anyway, in that case, yeah, I'm pretty much done. It's, what is it, quarter past twelve at night. And I haven't even done much in the way of coding tonight. But I have fixed up at least all my jobs that I need to. Tomorrow is going to be busy. I've got at least three MacBooks coming in, which will be good. Nice change. I'm going to miss my having my MacBooks. It's like, I don't mind doing the iPhones, but it's not my thing. It's like, I'll leave that to people like you, Jason, and Chris, and Jess. Uh, but, um, yeah, I'll, I'll stick to the MacBooks and PC laptops. Just keep one on the keychains, the SIM card. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Hey, Oliver. So you've got slide to say. Yeah, it's the typical don't pay for anything type. Now he's convinced of... Oh, okay, well, that, that's a bit of a uh, nice convincing way to go. But I mean, I'll keep adding features to it. Uh, we'll see how the jobs thing goes. It may or may not pan out. You know, people... Sometimes it can be just the smallest thing that inhibits people grabbing on to a feature. So hopefully I can make it as... Uh, how could you say? Resistance-free as possible. We'll see how we go. Uh, if you want to have a look at the beta version of it, yeah, just send me a message. But I think there's probably still a few too many adjustments I want to make. Like I said, with the back end, I'll have to end up with two databases. The first one will be just simply an indexing table, but it will be separate from the individual databases. I pretty much am now sold on the idea that I'll have one file per job. It's going to be a little bit scrappy when you look at the folder and you see all the hundreds or thousands of files, but it does make it easy for backups and it makes it very easy for distributed um, access. So, yeah, so yeah, that's working. I mean, you know, with tri styles, you sort of, you know, you, you don't really expect too many mistakes with that. I think the biggest thing there was simply trying to get that coaxial cable to work, and well, we got lucky, you know, it worked. So. I was genuinely expecting it to eat through the... Um, I mean, it is Teflon core, I believe, but I'd still expect the heat of the soldering iron to get through that occasionally. With thousands of tickets since the beginning of the year, that feature is amazing. All right. Well, we'll give it a whirl. You know, it may or may not work, but like I said, it's just one of those things where you have to put it into play and you sort of go, you know, this is a bit niggly, or this isn't quite working, and you adjust it, and hopefully eventually you find a way that it works just smoothly for you. Is that the one? I, yes, cues it is. You just don't have, obviously I haven't released the jobs version yet. So, all right, well, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to get myself some food, sit down, probably watch some bad Netflix, kick off to bed, and in the morning I'll get my delivery of the MacBooks and another day of working will start. So thank you all for coming along. Uh, it's been a long while since I've done a stream, but that's the way it goes. Yeah, can't tell what's going to be. And I'll catch us all later. So.